I copied these 10,000 doors in order to test my family creation workflow impact on the file size. I try to compare classical, non-nested, nested and multi-type nested family creation workflows and I will tell you all about my findings and workflow pros and cons in this video. Here I have laid out three door families with nested components that are included in each of these families. This is the original door family downloaded from Autodesk. This is the door family created with nested workflow. This is my cat. And this is multi-type nested family. This family has multiple types with different nested door panels like panel of 4, panel of 2, the standard panel and the flat panel. Now let's compare how each of these are made and let's start with the original one from Autodesk. We can see that the panel is just modeled in place with extrusion. Here we can see the end and the start extrusion distances. And if we go to the elevation, we can see all of the reference planes that guide these extrusions. The trim is also modeled in place as sweep geometry. The only thing that is nested is this door handle, but it also could be modeled in place. Now let's check out this nested family. You can see that the panel is nested, meaning this is panel family loaded inside of this door family. And we can see that the door swing annotation is also a nested family. Now let's see what's so special about this multi-type nested family. We can see that there are multiple handle, panel and trim profile type parameters. And we can change the trim profile type. And also we can see that when the different type is selected, the type parameters also change. And you can see that all of these families are loaded in this multi-type door family. There are different panels, different trims, etc. And when we go into the family, we can see that the panel is a family, the trim is a family, the frame is a family, another trim is another family. If we select this trim family, we can add a parameter to this family, and it is created as a type parameter with data type of family type doors. Now when we look back at the parameters window, we can see that there are multiple family type parameters for each nested family. Now let's look at how these family modeling styles impact the project file size. Here I have multiple projects with 10,000 doors of each type copied next to each other. And this is a file with 10,000 multi-type door families with 4 types. Meaning the family has 4 different nested panel family types. And then we have a file with 10,000 2 type nested family doors. And also a file with 10,000 single type nested door families. So let's look at the file sizes. And we can clearly see that the project with 4 type nested multi type doors is the bigger one. But I was surprised to see that the file size difference is not that significant comparing to the file with 10,000 original doors where everything is modeled in place inside of one family. The file size difference is only 1180 kilobytes, that is roughly 1.2 megabytes. And for a project with that many doors, I think that the file size difference is worth it. Now, if the difference is that small, how to choose which workflow to use? Let's see and compare the underlying nested architecture of these families with the help of simplified schemes. This is the scheme for how I build simple nested families where each family consists of simple nested family set. It doesn't mean that there cannot be multiple family types per family that differs by sizes, materials and other parameters. This just means that this workflow does not include multiple nested families like multiple door panels, multiple door trims or multiple door handles. So let's say we want to create another family. We duplicate the existing family outside of the project, rename it and replace the nested families with our new families. And we can use nested families from our nested family database or create new families if needed. And then we load our new family into the project. I try to use this workflow for when the family types require many different parameters. For example, one would be simple interior door family, another would be door with two panels and windows. In that case, there would be many different parameters, some that control only nested interior door panel, some that control only nested panel with windows. And the parent family would become very complex and we want to avoid complex families. 
In case of simple family like interior door, I like to use multi-type nested family that is shown in this scheme. This family consists of multiple panel families that are loaded in family and controlled by family data parameter. The same goes for frame families that are also loaded and controlled by family data parameter. And the frame families itself consists of nested sweep profile families. Same goes for nested handle families that are also controlled by family data parameter. And we can load the family into the project and then we can create different family types that display different nested family types. So the door family type 2 displays only frame family 2, panel family 2 and handle family 2. And if you want to create additional family types with different nested families, we just load these nested families into the parent family and reload that door family back into the project. Then all we have to do is create new family type and set the data type parameters to display newly loaded nested families. So to recap, I use single nested family workflow when the family types are very different and the nested families require different parameters to drive them. And I use multi-type nested family workflow when the family types are similar and nested families can be controlled by the same parameters. For example, these nested panel families have the same width and height parameters that control them. And I can easily add more nested panel families if they are controlled by the same parameters. So I hope you find this overview useful and I'm very interested to hear if you have your own family creation workflows. In that case leave your comment down below and thank you for watching, have a great day and see you in the next video.